have always wanted to share my enthusiasm and excitement. This film gives a real insight into your life, yet in it you talk about the pressures of fame, the frustrations of dealing with intrusions by the media. So why did you want this film to be made? The film was meant as a journey in science and to give hope to those with disabilities. At the age of 21, I was told I had an incurable disabling disease that would kill me in two or three years. The doctors were wrong about that. Brain world black holes and radiant if they aren't extreme, but slowly. At Cambridge, I mentor a new generation of cosmologists. Do you think in some ways your disability has, has made you a better scientist? I must admit, I do tend to drift off to thinking about physics or black holes when I get left behind in the conversation. In fact, my disability has been a help in a way. Of which of your many achievements are you most proud, and, and why? I am very proud that I have been able to contribute to our understanding of the universe. I am also glad that my work has reached a popular audience because I believe it is important that the public should know and have the chance to understand the seemingly mysterious work of scientists. Your movements have become more limited over the years. You're able to communicate now because you still have control over a muscle in your cheek. Do you worry about the future and the, the prospect that you one day might lose that control and ability to communicate? Although I have lost the use of almost all my muscles, my cheap muscle remains strong because the nerve connecting it to the brain is short. I communicate by moving a cheap muscle, which is detected by a sensor on my glasses. That feeds to a keyboard emulator program on a tablet computer. With them, I can speak with a voice synthesizer and do anything anyone else can do with a computer. After suffering from pneumonia, you were once put on a life support machine, which your wife was given the option of, of switching off. Should the families of those who wish to die, but who are too disabled to take their own lives, be able to assist them without fear of prosecution? I think those who have a terminal illness and are in great pain should have the right to choose to end their lives, and those that help them should be free from prosecution. We don't let animals suffer, so why humans? Professor Hawking, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.